Today, two of the top powers in the American Conference are met, featuring two of the game's best quarterbacks. In week one, the Broncos' John Elway couldn't beat the Heat in Los Angeles, but he led Denver to two last play victories the following two games. For the Bills, Jim Kelly, frustration came week two, when Buffalo was smothered by the Dolphins 30-7. The Bills rebounded last Monday night, giving both these teams two and one records. Both Denver and Buffalo boast phenomenal offensive weapons at quarterback and running back. The NFL's number two rusher is Bronco Bobby Humphrey with 285 yards in three games. Number one in the NFL is the Bills' Thurman Thomas, who ran for 214 yards against the Jets Monday night. At wide receiver, two showcase players are featured. Denver's Vance Johnson is a game-breaker whose heroics have helped the Broncos in both their victories this year. While Andre Reid of Buffalo is simply one of the very best in the game. A showcase indeed as coaches Dan Reeves and Marv Levy are ready to match strategies in the NFL's Game of the Week. NBC Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Denver Broncos versus the Buffalo Bills. Overcast in Buffalo, there has been rain this morning. The field is wet. It appears to be clearing now as the Broncos and the Bills are ready to tee it up. Good afternoon, everyone. On a big game day in Buffalo, Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. A year ago, the Broncos came in here on a Monday night as an underdog and soundly beat the Bills 28-14. And the Bronco players say that was a turning point in their season. It really brought them together, kicked them to a higher level for a run at the Super Bowl. The quarterbacks, Trump, get a lot of press. Kelly and Elway, and well, they should, but these teams would like to run the ball if they can. No question about it, and they have the people to run the ball, too. Of course, the running game keeps the defense honest and keeps the pressure off the quarterback. And for the Denver Broncos, Bobby Humphrey has been a whale of a find. He's got two straight 100-yard rushing performances. His average carry last week probably overshadowed by Thurman Thomas and his performance on Monday night close to 12 yards a carry these two guys must keep the other team's defense honest the Bills defense is called non-stop pressure by coach Walt Corey their defensive coordinator he wants the heat on the opposing QB all game long they got the guys that can keep it on oh man these guys are a double dose of disaster you got Biscuit Cornelius Bennett on the outside one on one side and Bruce Smith on the other side and of course one of the secrets to stopping Denver is keeping Elway in the pocket Walt Corey thinks these two guys can get the job done the Broncos probably have the best set of safeties in the National Football League and Steve Atwater and Dennis Smith they both were out with injuries last week against Seattle today they're both back Yeah, these guys are as big as linebackers they play all over the field and uh, Smith has the sprained ankle still bothering him but he's fine Atwater has the pulled muscle in his ribcage and he's okay and that's got to make Denver fans feel good both those guys are there Broncos come in again as an underdog this year but John Elway says we're confident we can move the ball on Buffalo and now the Denver Broncos as you look at coach Dan Reeves are ready to receive to start the game they've won the toss Bills getting set to kick it off. There's Coach Marv Levy of the Buffalo Bills in his fourth full season as head coach of the Bills. Dan Reeves now in his tenth year as the head man of the Broncos. Alton Montgomery and Sammy Winder are back deep. Last uh, year it was 28-14. Second game of the season. Denver the victor. Here's the kickoff downfield. Winder is backpedaling into his end zone and he'll not bring it out. So John Elway and the Broncos will go on offense first and 10 at their 20-yard line. Over the years, the Broncos are 3-3 three and three here at Buffalo. Gerald Perry at left tackle. Reeves says he could be a great player. Jeriga, Karts, Waddell, and Lanier, the rest of the offensive line. Elway at quarterback. Steve Sewell, standout pass catcher out of the backfield. Bobby Humphrey, the runner. When the passing downs come, Ricky Nateel and Michael Young will come in to join Vance Johnson and Mark Jackson. Tight end Clarence K. They'll go to double tight end. Sets a lot with Mobley in. And running the ball is Bobby Humphrey. They run counters and a lot of draw plays to Humphrey. Jeff Wright and Leon Seals were on the stop. There's the defensive front. Bruce Smith consensus all pro at right end. He'll be all over the field. Bennett, Conlon, Bentley, and Talley, four terrific linebackers. In the secondary, Jackson and Odoms are at the corners. Leonard Smith, a hard hitter, and Mark Kelso are the deep backs. Chris Hale and the rookie number one draft choice. James Williams will come in on the nickel package. Looks like uh, 
Gerald Perry, the left tackle, is injured, Trump. Gerald Perry shaken up. Now, this is a tackle that's going to spend most of the day, if he's okay, going against Buffalo's best rusher, Bruce Smith. But right now, Perry coming off apparently turned his ankle. Dan Reeves absolutely raving about this kid, Trump, about where he's going to be as a player. He said he could be as good as anybody that ever played the position that he's been around, that Dan Reeves has been around. The Denver Broncos are not deep. The Denver Broncos are not deep at offensive line, and the injury to Perry is a huge problem for them on the first play. So after a four-yard run by Bobby Humphrey, the Broncos now go... Second down and six. Here's Elway against the big rush. Gets the ball away. Nicely done as he gets it to Orson Mobley. A huge tight end. Big rush. Cornelius Bennett was coming on a blitz on the left side. And Elway very coolly stood in and then led his tight end perfectly. Very close to a first down. It looks like the nose of the ball will be just short. You can see what the Buffalo Bills are going to start with today. They're going to immediately put pressure on John Elway as best they can. That time, Cornelius Bennett untouched but they still make the completion they're down and about a foot Broncos have really developed a power running game and here's the race Bobby Humphrey he dives across the 30 and it looks like he's just got the first down for Denver Bruce Smith was on the tackle Bobby Humphrey now in his second year from Alabama, 6'1", 200 pounds. He was the NFL Rookie of the Year in 89. He's run the ball this season, as you see, 55 times coming into this game. The rest of the team combined has run it 25 times, so he's it for the running game. We apologize, Mr. Trumpy's mic not in working order. Is it going now, Trump? I think so. You're ready. Here's Elway on a sprint out. The rush is coming. Elway down for you with a perfect throw, and that's the matchup that the Broncos wanted to get. Steve Sewell against Smith, the Buffalo strong safety, Leonard Smith. They can do that out of formation where they can single Steve Sewell with Leonard Smith. Now, Leonard Smith is a great tackler, but out there as a cornerback, that's a tremendous mismatch. You can see he's going to give an awful lot of ground. That's a 17-yard completion. That's something that Denver is looking for and will go to all day long. That is a matchup that the Bills cannot win today. Sewell on Smith. Steve Sewell again is out wide against Leonard Smith at the top of your screen as the Broncos moving the ball nicely in their opening possession. Humphrey. And Bobby Humphrey breaks through the Buffalo defense inside the 45-yard line. Invariably, they go to Humphrey on first and 10 plays. Ray Bentley filled and made the stop at linebacker. Don, the uh, change on the offensive line is 69. Daryl Hamilton in for Gerald Perry. We have no idea what the injury is to Gerald Perry. But you see the cutback by Bobby Humphrey that Dan Reeves loves. Great sight as a running back. Uh, that old line about running to daylight. This kid does it in grand fashion. Now they bring Sewell into the backfield. Open set behind Elway. Out of second down and three. Sewell. He appears to have yet another Denver first down. John Elway told us yesterday that the offensive line of this Denver team is the best he's seen since he's been with the Broncos. Now in his eighth year. But as pointed out, Gerald Perry went out on the first play from scrimmage with what appeared to be an ankle injury. Limped off. Whether or not we'll see him back, we haven't heard yet. Uh, he's trying to walk it up on the sideline, and he certainly realizes his importance in the game plan against Buffalo, stopping Bruce Smith. Okay. First down and 10 for the Broncos. No score, first quarter. Draw play, Humphrey. And Bobby Humphrey breaks it inside the 30-yard line. He gains 12 yards and another Bronco first down. So the Broncos just dismantling the Bills' defense, a 12-yard gain. And you mentioned earlier that the Broncos like to run a lot of things including the draw from behind the defense you'll see the way this sets up there's nothing fancy about it good lead block by Sewell 30 on Shane Conlon and with Bobby Humphrey you can't tackle him with your arms you got to hit him with his shoulder Four carries so far 25 yards for Humphrey and the Broncos drive on after taking the opening kickoff starting from their 20 Sewell on a slant and good news for the Broncos, Gerald Perry is back in the game at left tackle. So apparently he walked off whatever the injury was. Big number 60, Gerald Perry. 
295 pounds. Who Dan Reeves complimented a great deal last night when we talked with him. He said that he's gotten his life together off the field and is a changed personality and is a big contributor to this offensive line. But still, first play of the game, something goes wrong. He's still limping, too. He is limping big time on his right leg. So I don't know if he's healthy enough to handle Bruce Smith. They got Bruce Smith right over him now. As you see, second down, Broncos need eight. Play fake. Elway throws to the open man, Sewell out of the backfield, and he's down inside the 20, down close to the 16-yard line. Take a look now, Trumpet Gerald Perry. See how he's moving. Nine-yard completion there. They're rolling away from Bruce Smith. Let's see if we can see any effect on this. And he lets Bruce Smith inside. You don't want to do that. But the completion is made, and he's not healthy. He's out there going on guts right now. Hoping this thing works itself out. We don't know if it's an ankle or knee injury, but it's a big injury. Elway going to a shorter pass route offense. He threw 40 times in the win over Seattle last Sunday at mile high. Out of short routes. Eight. Humphrey, delayed draw, and Bobby Humphrey is down to the five yard line. And a first and ten play. Humphrey rips through the Bills for a ten yard gain, and Nate Odom starts up. In his wisdom, he could soon be out of the game with an ejection going after an offensive lineman, a 12-yard gain on the play. Well, they caught Buffalo in a blitz. Hey, the tight end was mixing it up. Shane Conlon, 58, comes right up the middle. They run the draw right by him. Watch 58. Again, a good block by Steve Sewell. And Humphrey just goes around that block. Well, this has been relatively easy for the Bronco offense against this defense. Broncos slicing the Bills defense apart on this opening drive. First down and goal, Denver. Humphrey down to the one-yard line. Very tied together in cohesion offensive blocking by the Broncos. Cornelius Bennett, 97, made the stop. Interesting thing that, that Denver does is their offensive linemen stand up, and they give the running backs the option to find the hole themselves. They just basically take the defense where it wants to go on an awful lot of occasions. They take very tight splits and they try to hide that running back behind these huge offensive linemen, and it works. Power set. Bobby Humphrey. Close. And he's in. How about that for a start? 80 yard drive. Whoa. So the Broncos go through the Bills looking like Super Bowl winners. Absolutely standout play by Denver. Look at this push. Mel Bratton with a good block. Bruce Smith was knocked all the way back in the end zone. Once that ball crosses the plane of the goal line, it is a score. And in that opening drive, Trump, we have a long way to go, but the Bills gave no indication they could stop anything Denver does. They, we knew they wanted the matchup of Sewell against the free safety Leonard Smith. They got big plays out of that. But they got it with their base offense, the Bobby Humphrey runs, and now the extra point by pro bowler David Treadwell is up and good. With 8-10 to play in the first quarter, the Bills have not yet had the ball, and the Broncos move out to a 7-0 lead. We'll be back with the Denver kickoff in a moment. This Oldsmobile got 16 highway miles a gallon. Of there you see the scoring drive, Don. The most impressive part of that, Bobby Humphrey had seven carries for 41 yards. That's close to six yards a carry on the opening drive of the game. Check that Bobby Humphrey haircut. His teammate Mel Bratton does the cutting. Bratton broke his finger last week. Humphrey said he might fire him to look better. Here's a kick downfield. They send a bouncer at the Buffalo Bills. Picking up the ball is Don Smith. And he takes it out across. He's not done yet. Smith is all the way out to the 30-yard line. So now, as down to make the play was Randy Robbins, number 48 for Denver. The Bills come out. Let's see what Kelly and his offense can do. Glenn Parker starting at left tackle for injured Will Wolford, one of the Bills' best linemen. Parker is a very good rookie. Richer, Hall's a pro bowler. And on the right side, Davis and Ballard. Thurman Thomas, the NFL's leading rusher. Jamie Mueller's his blocker. Lofton and Reed, the wide receivers. Metzlar's the tight end, will come out on the three wide set. Don Smith will come in the backfield. Steve Pasker will go to wide receiver. Kelly fires on first down. Wide open man. He makes the connection to James Lofton. First down, Buffalo. A 12 yard gain on the play. Bills go into that hurry up offense. They've been using it more and more. Going into alignment without a huddle. The fans like that. 
One of the biggest NFL crowds of the year. 80,000 are here at Ritz Stadium. Been long sold out. Trying to keep the Broncos from making defensive changes. Here's a carry by Thurman Thomas. And a first down play. He's ahead to about the 42-yard line. Yeah, Kelly told us also that he likes to hurry up offense, especially here in Buffalo, because the fans like it so much. It's, he's trying to kickstart the offense and lock the defense into one coverage. Still in that hurry up. Bills did not huddle. Elway's concerned. He calls a lot of audibles, but this crowd can take you out. And here's a rush on Kelly. He gets away. Simon Fletcher had him and lost him, and now Kelly's out to the 44-yard line. Simon Fletcher put the big heat on Jim Kelly, and then a rookie, Jim Shemansky from Michigan State, a 10th-round draft choice who's starting. I don't know how Fletcher misses him. Now, Kelly is a big quarterback and got great leg strength, but Simon Fletcher just missed him cleanly, and Shemansky cleans up, and the Bills go right back to the line of scrimmage. Now, play call, third down. The Bills need almost eight. Kelly gets time, runs out of it, gets the ball away, and it's not even close, and the Buffalo Bills have to punt it. Boy, there's great coverage by Denver. Outstanding coverage by Denver. You can see Jim Kelly look like he's going to throw it, bring it back about three or four times. He had no receiver even close to being open. Kyle Mecklenburg Trump got some heat on Kelly. He forced that Aaron throw, and the coverage, as you point out, was very good. Rick Tootin into punt now. Vance Johnson is back to return it. Denver leads the game, seven nothing. An 80-yard, 12-play drive to open the ball game. Here, Vance Johnson with room to run. Buffalo's normally effective special teams have been short-circuited by poor punting this season. So the Broncos, as some boos start to cascade down, send their offense back out. A 36-yard punt, but a net of 22. A 14-yard return by Vance Johnson. Elway set to go to With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Pricky back in Rich Stadium. 80,000 look on, sun breaking through now as Elway leads the Broncos again. Humphrey running hard, and he's not done until he gets across the 40-yard line on a first down carry. A gain of about six yards on the play. Leon Seals, number 96, having a big year at left end, made the tackle. But on every down front, these Broncos get plus yardage. Yeah, the, the offensive line performance by the Denver Broncos to this point in the game, unbelievably impressive. They're standing right up and pushing these guys right off the line of scrimmage. Of course, the inexperienced part of this defense is at the nose tackle inside. Seals and uh, the nose tackle don't really have a lot of gear. Jeff Wright. Elway on a sprint out, takes a look, and John Elway dances ahead for a first down and steps out. Shane Conlon ran him out of bounds along the other inside linebacker. Elway's stronger than he's ever been. He's been on a weight program, but he's the lightest he's been since he's been in the NFL. Told us yesterday he's down to about 211. Had an excellent preseason, had a good offseason, got away from Denver for a while, kind of rejuvenated his thoughts. Uh, the secret to this point in the ball game, Don, first down yardage by the Broncos. They can get six or seven yards per first down, and the defense of the Bills can't turn their pass rush loose. Another first down for Denver. Broncos lead 7 0. They've owned the ball here in the first quarter. Humphrey looks for room to dance and gets across the 50 down to the 47 yard line. Bobby Humphrey was passed up by 16 other teams when he went in the supplemental draft because of foot injuries at Alabama. And I mentioned the tight splits by the offensive line and the just stand up, take them where they want to go approach by this offensive line. It's certainly worked. They're pushing them all over the place. That time you saw Bruce Smith standing up almost as uh, like a middle linebacker. Look at these numbers for Humphrey now. Nine carries already. 53 yards. Bobby Humphrey comes in averaging over five yards a carry for the season. He talked about Thank you. how all these teams passed him up. Dan Reeves said uh, it was really our doctors who finalized the decision we were going to take, and they said his foot won't be a problem. And the fact that he just doesn't have that blazing speed as a running back. And as Reeves said, if he did have that blazing speed, we wouldn't have him. That's One correct. of the other 16 at pass would have taken him even with a foot problem. Bobby Humphrey rips into open field and takes it down to the 29-yard line. Free ball. Buffalo has it. If it be, it's a fumble. He wasn't down first. Nate Odoms was on the ball. We'll see or not whether they rule that it was a fumble. No signal yet. 17-yard run by Bobby Humphrey. 
Bob McElwee is the referee, and I haven't seen a signal yet, Don. Looks like the Bills have the ball. They do. Nate Adams comes up with it. Number 37. But, now they finally give a signal that it's Buffalo's ball. They get the defense spread out all over the field, Don, and Buffalo comes in with the extra defensive backs, and there's just no one there to stop. Yeah, that's a fumble, no question about it. Kelso looked like he may have stripped the ball. Mark Kelso, the free safety, so a turnover stops this Denver drive when, again, the Broncos were moving the ball as if they were unstoppable. They were on that opening drive. 80 yards, 12 plays, Humphrey on the payoff end for the touchdown. Being reviewed was one of his knees down, uh, that's going to be the big question. Oh, the play stands. Bob McAwee says the play stands. Again. Leonard Smith, 46, 38. Kelso make the hit. No question. Ball is loose. Turnover to Buffalo. Bill's second possession. You'll remember they got a 12-yard pass play for a first down to Lofton. That was it for their first offense. Now Thurman Thomas looks for room. And find some. He's out to about the 32-yard line. Gain of just about three. Carl Mecklenburg, who's been to the Pro Bowl four of the last five years, number 77 for the Broncos, was on the stop. Front seven, Powers, Cragen, and Shemansky. Fletcher, Munford, Michael Brooks, who had 20 tackles in last Sunday's game with Seattle, and Mecklenburg. Brooks is a player to watch, number 56. Smith and Henderson at the corners. Smith and Atwater are back as the safeties. Then you saw the extra people that come in when they go to their seven-man defensive alignment, seven defensive backs. Kelly swings it out. This is Jamie Mueller. Blockers in front of Mueller, who's not fast, but he's strong, takes it very close to a first down. Be third and short if he didn't get there. Let's check the 10-minute ticker. Nothing up for the Giants and Cowboys. Miami's gone in front of the Steelers at Pittsburgh. Detroit up on the Green Bay Packers. Tampa Bay's Gary Anderson scored at Minneapolis. Bucks lead the Vikings 7-0 in the first quarter. Same number we have here. The Broncos in front of the Bills 7-0. Here's a measurement. Broncos trump a very confident team. That was evident from Dan Reeves through every player you talk to. They know if they hang in, they have an ability to win close games. Last two weeks, they had big fourth quarter leads, 28-14 over Seattle last week, the week before 21-9 over Kansas City, and then had a rally to win. Well, I think the offense of the Broncos realized, too, that because the defense is hurt, they got to score and score often to protect this defense. And opening drive of this game certainly bodes well for the Denver Broncos. Kelly says something to Lofton is the top of your screen is the wide receiver. Kelly's looking that way. Here's a throw. James Lofton can't quite get to the ball. Wide open. Kelly let him a little too much. He'll be going back to that. James Lofton, who at one time was a first-team All-Pro for the Green Bay Packers, for a while, a couple of years, he might have been the best player in the NFL in any position. He was yeah. that good. This kid has not missed. This kid has not missed a game in his career. That's the double rotation zone. Corners up, safeties out. I have a feeling that Buffalo is going to try, try to take advantage of 28 Elliott Smith, 24 Wyman Henderson all day. Both Plan B players. Bills got Lofton. He was waived by the Raiders. Thurman Thomas shows his stuff as he darts in and gets ahead for a gain of almost 10 yards on a second down play. The over nine yards where they spot the ball brings up third down and less than one. Atwater, the strong safety, made the stop. Certainly don't want to shortchange the offensive line of the Buffalo Bills. I consider one of the best. Big lead block by Jamie Mueller, 41. It's the defensive linebacker on his stomach and and Thomas, of course, very quick, excellent receiver, and sure-handed, too. Very good pass catcher. Third and one. Extra tight ends in. They go to Jamie Mueller, and he gets there. He needed a yard, and he got two. And so the Bills get a first down. Andre Townsend, number 61, was in the game. He was the first hitter. Townsend's not played in a while. Had foot problems. Of course, Jamie Mueller... You see Townsend down there in the middle of that huddle. This is not a huge defensive line. 
but it's a one gap defense and a one gap defense you don't take on the whole man in front of you you're responsible for a gap on either side of you so they can be small and still be effective. Kelly played fake by some time open man downfield and it's almost kicked off. He had Lofton running free and he also had one of the tight ends Keith McKellar running free but the ball was off target there is a strong crosswind here in Western New York it's going to affect the kicking game and the deep throwing game. Now that was zone coverage by the Denver Broncos and frankly Jim Kelly should have thrown that ball a little better that would have been an easy completion to this point he's two of five for 18 yards but that's one he should have had right there. See old glory straight out in the wind and it'll pick up. Good playing conditions. Sun breaking through. Kelly throws on second down. He has an open man and nicely done. Thurman Thomas turns out on Steve Dennis Smith and makes the reception a 12 yard gain by Thomas and a first down for Buffalo. Now you see both offenses doing the same thing out of formation and motion. They're trying to get the safeties to cover running backs. The Denver Broncos did it. Sewell on Leonard Smith. This time you see Thurman Thomas do it on Dennis Smith. The strong safety not used to being out there in single coverage. Mueller gets the ball free ball and the Broncos have it. Jamie Mueller who doesn't get much work carrying the ball has it knocked free and the Broncos are on it. Cornerback Elliott Smith number 28. And the Bills are stopped as Smith makes the fumble recovery. It, it looks like Greg Craig in the nose tackle 71 makes the first contact. And the ball is already loose. Yeah, it's Craig and 71 at the bottom of the pile. Somehow it pops loose. Turnover is now even. Denver has the ball back. Let's see if we can see again. See, Craig and beats Ken Hull the center and pops that ball loose. And the cornerback Elliott Smith right there for the recovery. Broncos have always been well schooled at stripping the ball. Mueller had both arms on it. Their last possession. Take over again. Their third possession now for Denver. Broncos lead the game 7 0. Humphrey having a big day, and it gets bigger as he runs ahead for more yards. Now out to about the 39 yard line. Now let's go to NFL Live and Bob Costas. Bob? All right, Don, last Sunday against the Giants, as they were completely thwarted by the New York defense, Miami kept the ball for only 90 seconds in the first quarter. Here, on their first drive against Pittsburgh, they have it for 17 plays, better than eight minutes. Sammy Smith goes over from the one, and they lead 7-0 at Three Rivers. Don? Thank you, Bob. Dolphins developing a good running game after all those years of just the throw. Here's Elway with a fastball, but it comes in on the one hop. He played in the Yankee organization one after his junior year at Stanford. John Elway played outfield for the Odeana Farm Club in central New York State. And was very serious about baseball at one point. It looked like Cornelius Bennett gets his hand up. This is a quick three step drop by John Elway. You can look from behind the defense right behind Ray Bentley number 50. Ah, here we go. Bennett just tipped that ball away. They're down as the Bills bring their defenders up tight to bump at the line of scrimmage. Here's the rush on Elway. John Elway can go and he's on his way. John Elway sprints ahead for the first down and slides to a halt as John Elway makes big things happen. The coverage was good. The rush was on and Elway does it himself. A 13 yard gain and a Bronco first down. Actually the Buffalo Bills do a great job here. They stay in their pass rush lanes. You'll see. Smith on this side Bennett on the other side now the inside guys seals and fields are supposed to contain him or excuse me Jeff Wright but Elway very very quick afoot very nifty is able to avoid the inside pass rushers for a big pickup and another first down. Thirty six and Elway got 13 on the run. Penalty marker. Danny Winder runs the ball and doesn't get much. In fact, he may have lost the yard. Bruce Smith struck him head on. Don, I think something happened to Bobby Humphrey. Now he come, he's coming back in, but he went out for a play and he was limping a little bit. Illegal motion. There he is. He, he got Gerald Perry with a bad ankle, and now Humphrey. Two minutes of motion. Offense. Penalty decline. Second down. Yeah. 
28 seconds to play in the first quarter. The Broncos took the opening drive 80 yards on 12 plays. Uh, Don, here's the offensive formation now that Humphrey had the big draw play on. There are two, four, five, six defensive backs in the ballgame. This is when they gave it to Humphrey for the draw for the big play. Second and 12 and a draw play it is as Humphrey gets ahead for a gain of about five yards. He's outside and inside the 45 yard line of the Bills down to the 44. It, it certainly looks like what they're going to do is anytime Buffalo gets in that nickel package Humphrey's going to be firing up through there. So there's timeout on the field at the end of the first quarter with the Denver Broncos in the lead seven up there defensively to make the tackle. Here it is again. Broncos need seven as you see. Third down. Blitz. Elway. Hard throw. But there's a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. And these guys are really starting up after the Leon Seals and Doug Wydell were knocking each other around. No play. Play is negated. Illegal motion against the Broncos before the snap of the ball. They get a five yard penalty and have to do the play over. This is Susan Erlad and Mr. Neil Ricks. Please report to It certainly looks like Denver is going to stay. 15 minutes even. Yeah, that was a dead ball play, so it's got to go back uh, it's as if the ball was never snapped. But Denver is staying with this offensive set. Look, they got the, the four wide receivers, and Buffalo has its standard defense in, so now this is where you throw. Buffalo brings almost eight people out of the line with the cornerbacks up tight. Smith came early. Replay. Replay indeed for John Elway. Downfield throw, and it's a connection to Ricky Nateel inside the 30 and down to the 27 yard line of the Bills. It'll go. Don, the, the Bills defensive backs drop coverage. 22 yards on the catch. Offside. And 97 defense. Penalties declined. First down. Boy, I tell Carl you, Bennett looked like Smith jumped. Uh, you had your choice. Here's the receiver that catches the ball, but watch the defensive backs drop coverage. I think they see that it's a free play after they jump off sides. Elway, with plenty of time, stays looking for Natil when he breaks across wide open. Humphrey taken down by Cornelius Bennett and Ray Bentley. Bennett with that great speed. He, they align him all over. Be on either side. They don't want to give the blockers any primary indication of where he's going to line up. And Smith is moving around a lot more this year. Well, that's that's Humphrey's 11th carry, and he's approaching 75 yards already rushing in this game. We'll check the scoreboard after the next play. As right now, the ball is positioned at the Bills' 28-yard line. Second down and nine coming up for the Broncos. Elway fakes. Here comes the rush. Good throw by Elway, but Bratton couldn't make the turn in the catch, so it's incomplete. As we check the 10 minute ticker now, Mel Bratton from Miami of Florida. Pittsburgh now down by 14 points as the Steelers to a fourth week of play with yet an offensive touchdown scored by their team. Detroit leading Green Bay. Colts up on the favored Eagles. Napa Bay continues to lead. Here in Buffalo at 7 nothing Denver in the second quarter. Broncos went 12 plays, 80 yards in the opening drive. Bobby Humphrey from a yard out for the touchdown. Third down, Elway and the Bronx need almost 10. Draw play, and they stuff it. Bills read it all the way. Jeff Wright, the nose tackle, 91. Well, they finally stop it. They got the same formation. It's a tough field goal try now for Treadwell. But still, they, they run the same formation, try to spread the defense out. They got six defensive backs in a ball game, and Jeff Wright is unblocked. There to get Bobby Humphrey. That's the first minus yardage the Denver Broncos have had today. Gary Kubiak will hold a 50-yard attempt for David Treadwell, who led the American Conference in scoring last year and went to the Pro Bowl. This would be a great spot for a fake. Kubiak's the quarterback. Block! Bills have the ball. James Williams, the rookie top draft choice, takes it out across the 40 and gets it to the 45-yard line. And that really keys the Buffalo team, and 80,000 are up and cheering. Let's go, 
Daryl Talley makes the block. So the Bills stop the Broncos drive and Buffalo goes on offense when we come back. Here's the block. Daryl Talley gets his hand on it and look who the wingman is. Rick Dennison cut and just brought back this week. He goes outside too quickly. Talley makes the block. Talley the Bills say grades out as one of the two or three best players in the team every season. Never seems to get the credit outside of Buffalo as the Broncos sweep under Thurman Thomas trying to go wide and Denver was reading 34 all the way. Carl Mecklenburg was on the play along with Steve Atwater. Boy Atwater is the kind of guy you want in your team. He shows up smiling. Just can't wait to play can he. Yeah he told us last night that he last year he played at 217 this year he weighs 220 picked up some strength and some speed. And uh, this guy's a prototype. I mean everybody would like to have one of him at least. Went to Arkansas. He's from St. Louis. His mother was from Arkansas, and he's always fond of the state and the school. Here's Kelly throwing wide open and losing the ball. At the tight end, Keith McKellar, right in his hands. Now let's go to NFL. In Philadelphia, the Colts trailing the Eagles 3 to nothing. Jack Trudeau goes to work. Little flip out to Albert Bentley. He gets some good blocks, and he does some spectacular running. It's a 73-yard play and leads to a 5-yard Trudeau to Jesse Hester touchdown pass. And the Colts, without Eric Dickerson, and this week without Jeff George, leads 7-3 at Philly. Thank you, Bob. Now the Bills go to the shotgun. They're down at 11. Lofton with a spectacular catch. James Lofton extending himself and takes it to the 37-yard line. An 18-yard gain on the play. Wyman Henderson was the man in coverage, and Denver had the 47 defense in there. Four rushers, seven defensive backs. Kelly's looking all over the field. He finds single coverage over here, and Lofton with a very acrobatic catch for the first down. So that keeps the Bills drive alive. You remember their last sustained drive. Mueller fumbled the ball. He hasn't been back in since on offense. Here's a throw and a catch with the ball is Andre Reed, an all pro player last season. And he's inside of the 19 yard line. A gain of 18 yards on the play as Kelly with a great fake looks off the Denver defenders and then throws a strike to number 83. Oh, is this guy an all pro? He's averaged 60 plus catches and six touchdowns a year for his career and that really was a non pattern just zone coverage he goes up the seam and Kelly finds him he's been terrific against Denver at 13 catches for almost 160 yards against the Broncos a year ago did Andre Reed for the Bills now their first scoring threat to the run they go and Thurman Thomas has stopped as the Broncos with a good defensive game plan build a gap big Warren Powers knocks down Thurman Thomas Along with Michael Brooks. 56. Michael Brooks, 56 from LSU. Bill Arnsbarger, the longtime Miami Dolphin defensive coordinator, later the head coach at LSU, said Michael Brooks was the best linebacking prospect he's ever seen. Then he had a serious knee injury in college. Now he's come back and is looking better than ever. Well, last year he played outside and was a little lost. Inside, he can just hammer people. And he's done that a lot so far. Credited with 20 tackles against the Seahawks a week ago. Kelly on second down lost it into the end zone. Reed had a step on the defender but Kelly just had to release the ball as the Broncos had a big rush on him. Warren Powers was coming hard. Actually that's a positive play. The Bills do not throw the interception. And the blitz gets through there. You see Mecklenburg 77 Powers 91 but it, it just falls harmlessly into the end zone Kelly now five of ten for sixty seven yards and you give that one to the defense and go back to your game plan Tough call now for Kelly and the Bills as the Broncos show blitz and it's coming as Kelly drops back on third and ten and cannot make the connection and so the Bills drive stalls and they'll send their kicker out James Lofton the antenna receiver but the Broncos had blitz pressure at Jim Kelly at the snap of the ball. It sure looks like 
Denver is trying to double cover Thurman Thomas and Andre Reed and lead and leave uh, James Lofton in single coverage and that's the guy that Kelly is looking for most consistently. Scott Norwood has hit seven of ten field goal attempts this season. One of the NFL's most consistent place kickers. 37 yard attempt he spins it up oh, to the, hits no. the crossbar and it's no good. Oh. So the Bills come away with nothing and the Broncos continue to lead the game seven to nothing with nine fifty nine to play in the first half back after this. The moment Bobby Humphrey is the NFL's leading rusher he has seventy six yards and fourteen carries a day. As he runs again, penalty marker comes in. Could be an offensive holding call as the umpire threw in the flag. Shane Conlon, 58, was on the stop. Thurman Thomas has only 12 yards on five carries for the Bills. Humphrey, that was his 15th carry for he's about 80 yards now. The play, that play will come back. Holding, 66, offense. 10 yards, first down. Jim Jurega, the left tackle, left guard, was called for the hold. It's going to be interesting to see what Buffalo does here defensively. Do they put in the extra defensive backs? When they have, Denver's taking good advantage of them. Look, they're staying with their standard defense. Straight 34 defense. They got to rely on the pass rush here. Elway with that extra dimension that sets him apart, his ability to run. We saw him do it on a third down play before for a first down. For the draw, and the Bills shut it down. Humphrey gets ahead for some, but not much. He's to about the 14-yard line on a first down and 20 play. So it will now be third down and or second down and about 16 as Leon Seals, 96, made the stop. Don, once again, second down and about 14 yards, and Buffalo, because Denver's had so much sucks against, so much luck against their nickel package, staying with their straight defense. 8.55 to play first half. Broncos lead the game 7-0. Elway dumps it off to Sewell, who's on the run. And Steve Sewell breaks it. He's got a first down and more as he's out across the 35-yard line. A tremendous execution by the Broncos on second down, and they needed about 16. They get 22. Oh, this is a well-conceived play because Steve Sewell starts out helping the offensive left tackle block on Bruce Smith. And that fools the defense. And then once he gets by there, see the linebackers drop off. Oh, this is well executed by the Denver Broncos. He outruns Jeff Wright, the nose tackle. Once he turns up field, big first down. Huge play by Denver. Doug Waddell gave him a lot of blocking, too. He led the way. But the Broncos go first down and 10. Elway sees that there's no completion there. That if he hit his receiver, he's been hit for a loss. So he wisely grounds the ball, but within the rules. An incomplete pass. He had no intention of completing no. that. Tried the slip screen, and he could see that. Watch 97 is Cornelius Bennett. He's right out there, so Elway just sacrifices the play, throws it into the ground. Hey, we go back, try another one. I think that's part of the maturity of John Elway. He now does things like that to protect him and also to help the team. Since he's been the start of the Broncos of 172 games, lost 38 and tied one. Elway's caught, but he gets away. Throws downfield and makes the connection. Vance Johnson makes a diving reception. Daryl Talley had, had him and lost him as Elway eluded the rush again. Dallas now trailing the Giants 10 to 3. Miami continues to lead the Steelers by two touchdowns. Packers got a field goal, still trail at Pontiac, Michigan. No changes in those two scores. Colts up on the Eagles, Tampa Bay up on the Vikings. Well, so far, the Buffalo Bills defense has done very little to slow down Denver. They are using all of their game plan to this point, Don. A lot of times they've been close to getting them, but Elway eludes them. Here's a run, and it's good yardage up the middle on first down, a gain of almost five yards. Shane Connell makes the stop on Bobby Humphrey, who crossed midfield. And that's the secret. You just said it. Gets good yards on first down. Jeff Wright makes, he's out of the ball game now. And something wrong with him, we'll find out. Hunter is in the ball game, 98. But that first down yardage by the Denver offense has really put the Buffalo Bills defense in trouble. 
Third inning at Fenway. Blue Jays lead the Red Sox 4 to 1. Toronto wins. They'd be back to within one game of the leader in the American League East. Second down and six now for the Broncos. They lead 7 0. Their touchdown came on the opening drive of the game. Look at Humphrey. 200 pounds, but he Humphrey runs with a ton of power. Breaking tackles. Leonard Smith finally knocked him down. First down, Broncos. Oh, this, this is uh, so far, I give the game ball. To the offensive line of the Denver Broncos. This is the counter, and you see Carlton Bailey, 54, missed the tackle. And Humphrey picks up another first down, and he's very close to 100 yards rushing with 6.06 to go in the first half. No Bronco runner has ever rushed for 100 yards against the Bills. Never had, I think, that might be the right word. Right now, he just did. Bobby Humphrey is over 100 yards in the first half, rushing against the Bills. Game clock down to 5.45 to play. Daryl Telly was on the stop on a first down carry. Humphrey's down to the 38-yard line. This is remarkable. They are getting such a great push up front, the, the Denver Broncos offensive line. Let's give them credit. Carts, Wydell, Jariga, Lanier, and Perry. Man, they are... Uh, really shoving Buffalo all over the field. Bobby Humphrey's confident. He says every time I touch the ball I believe something big's going to happen. Humphrey again. This time they get him. Shane Conlon, a pro bowl backer, shot the gap and made the tackle. Gain of only about a yard on the play on second down and five. Third and three. Jeff Wright came out just to get a little rest. The nose tackle for the Bills. They switched some people. Now Collin comes out as the pass coverage unit goes in. Okay, this is where Denver has really done an outstanding job against this this defense with uh, six defensive backs. No, well, they've changed. Buffalo. No, it's still six defensive backs. This is where they've really eaten them up, Don. The dimension here that is that Elway scrambling. Sure. Ability. Big rush. Coming hard was Bruce Smith. Sewell was open, but Elway couldn't find the mark. Upset with himself. Bruce Smith was right on Elway, though. Busting through, and that brings up fourth down and four, and they send their punter out, Mike Horan. Sewell was the hot receiver there, Don, and when there was pressure on John Elway, here's Sewell right here. He just runs a little flat, but Bruce Smith, you get an awful lot of pressure on him. High punt downfield. Bills let it go, and it hops into the end zone for a touchback. Broncos had good coverage down to try and down the ball, but it bounced away from them. Again, back to that last play. Here's Steve Sewell, and what they're trying to do is pick one of these guys and get Sewell out here in the flat. But unfortunately, there was so much pressure from Bruce Smith that Elway couldn't really come through on the pass and make the completion. So the Bills will try again from their 20 with 4.23 to play in the first half. Listen to my nephew. He's going to be a lawyer like me. He's even going to look like me. Oh, really? So does that mean on his first big trial day, the jury's going to notice his winning smile? Yeah. And his great suit. Yeah. Oh, his little flakes. No, Dandruff, me? Oh, it can happen to perfect people. Here, just use my... ...who were involved in addition to tight end Zeke Moab. Be going to NFL live at halftime as Jim Kelly looks to throw on first down. Downfield throw. His receiver fell on the break. Andre Reed and the ball came in low. Second and ten. Boy, the offensive game plan of the Bills not working at all. Not a bit. His numbers five of twelve for 67 yards. It just they got to get Thurman Thomas in this ball game. There's Marv Levy looking for answers. Coach Levy. Denver's had problems holding leads, though. As mentioned earlier, they led Seattle 28 to 14 in the fourth quarter last wow. Sunday. Look at that number. Oh, needed overtime to win. Swing pass. Thurman Thomas gets a block. Fumble. Loses the ball. Buffalo has it at the 21-yard line. Jim Richard, the left guard, fell on the ball. 51. I don't know how to account for Buffalo after a stellar performance against the New York Jets last week and also speaking of revenge against the Denver Broncos all week here in Buffalo to come out and play less than stellar. I mean home crowd home field. This is a place where they've been spectacular 
over the last couple of three years. And to this point, Don, there's no other way to look at it. They are flat. They've lost two games here, have the Bills, since the start of the 88 season. Over two seasons, just two losses at home. Third down throw by Jim Kelly, intercepted by Atwater. Steve Atwater picks it off. He looked like a wide receiver, and he's down to the 30-yard line. James Lofton, the intended receiver. So the Broncos strike on defense, get a second Bill turnover. Three oh nine to play in the first half. Here's Atwater, and this is the value of Atwater. One, two, three, four, five, six defensive backs, and Atwater, watch him find this ball. He's reading Jim Kelly's eyes. They're just playing zone. What a play. And what a player. And what field position for the Broncos who have the ball at the Buffalo 30, first down and 10. 7 0 Denver. Oh, ball was caught. They're going to rule he caught it at the five yard line. I thought a penalty marker was thrown, but it wasn't. Humphrey did a tremendous job picking up the blitz for Denver. A blitzer came at Elway and Humphrey decked him. Kirby Jackson was the man in coverage, and this is the most incidental contact I've seen. There's Daryl Talley just flooring John Elway. But at the end of this play, Kirby Jackson and Vance Johnson get tangled up. Johnson stays with it and makes another, boy, all the big plays on Denver's side so far. Now they go first and goal from just outside the five yard line. Humphrey. Down close to the two yard line. Terrific play from the offensive front of the Broncos. Keith Carts at center. Jerigan and Wydell at the guards. Perry and Lanier the tackles. Tight end Clarence Kay and Arson Mobley's been in a lot. Dan Reeves down to his playing way. He's, he's never looked better. Looks like he's ready to get his ankles taped and throw one of those halfback option passes he used to throw for Coach Landry. I'm not sure he'd want to do that. It takes more than uh, being in good shape to play this game nowadays. These guys are nuclear powered. <laughs> when he played, it was diesels, but these guys are nuclear. Of course, uh, Marv Levy never played the game. Actually, he's a good college running back, Marv Levy. Two minute warning is given. Back in western New York, nearby to the skyline of Buffalo, the stadium located in Orchard Park, New York. Buffalo, a boom city. Forbes magazine calls it one of America's boom towns with the free trade agreement with Canada. The Buffalonians talking proud. Uh, not about the performance of this football <laughs> team in the, the first half. Today. I don't understand this. United Way set to go to another record number. It has one of the highest contributors to the United Way of any campaign in America. Under the aegis of Robert M. Bennett. Second down and goal now for Denver. And they call a timeout. This is like a basketball timeout, you know? You go out there in the last play of the game, see what defense they got, go back and design another play. So Coach Reeves is going to talk it over with his quarterback, John Elway. These guys are doing it all right. Keep on doing what you're doing, John, says Reeves. Two arch. We have two minutes to play in the first half. We'll be joining Will and Bob and OJ. We'll jump off the picture board into live action with an update on all that's going on around the NFL. Sunday number four. Second and goal, Denver. Touchdown, Broncos. On a slant counter play, Steve Sewell goes in, and the Broncos extend their lead over the favored Bills to 13 to nothing. You could see what John Elway was doing there. It's an audible at the line of scrimmage and a nice trap. That's Jeriga 66 with a big kick out block. And Sewell has no one in front of him. It's an easy score. Nice block also by one Bobby Humphrey who has played a nice all around game. School, Sewell sto scores and Humphrey blocks. <laughs> A bit of an understatement, a nice all round game. Humphrey has been absolutely extraordinary. He's over 100 yards rushing, and now he's blocking like a tiger. And the extra point is good, and so the Broncos extend their lead to 14 0. Denver Bob Trumpy struggled the first three weeks of the season. Today, 
They look like the Super Bowl team they were projected to be again. They are struggling in no aspect of this particular football game in the first half. And frankly, I think uh, that the locker room of the Buffalo Bills is going to be a lot of yelling and screaming in there because the Bills have come nowhere close to playing good football. Long way to go, though, as the Bills run it back. Out across the 25-yard line, rookie Al Edwards takes it. He's out to the 27. Now Kelly will come out pitching with a no-huddle offense, 151 to play in the first half. Total domination of the Denver Broncos, 238 yards offense to 84 for the Bills. That's amazing. And Bobby Humphrey over 100 yards rushing. I mean, the Bills have done very little offensively today to help their defense. Kelly from the shotgun floods the defense with receivers, stands in, and he's going to be in trouble as he's knocked down at the 20. Again, great coverage by Denver. Oh, they're really ready. Defensive coordinator Wade Phillips has everybody tuned to what the Bills are going to do. Right back to the line of scrimmage they go. Fletcher coming hard. Kelly stands in. Ball is tipped. Almost intercepted. It's on the field incomplete. It'll be third down. Randy Robbins was right there with Thurman Thomas, number 48. But this 4 7 defense that Denver is showing is giving Buffalo no opportunity to complete passes. They're doubling every receiver, Don. It looks like the Broncos have 15 guys out there. <laughs> yeah. They're doubling everybody. They're playing with 11. Here's Kelly on third down. He needs 17. Open man, James Lofton, first down, Bills out to the 41 yard line. So the combination of Kelly to Lofton connects again a big play on third down. They needed 17, they got 21, and the Bills call a timeout. Kip Corrington on the uh, coverage, and again, it looked like zone on top and man underneath, and Lofton got back there. Miami, another score now 21 to nothing over Pittsburgh. Giants extend their lead over Dallas to 14 points at halftime. A big surprise in Pittsburgh where there is trouble brewing with no offense. Philadelphia has now rallied and gone out in front of Indianapolis. Tampa Bay continues to lead Minnesota. Doubleheader day on NBC Sports. Many of you will be seeing the Browns go to Kansas City to go against their old coach Marty Schottenheimer, now the head man of the Chiefs. 9 a.m. until 30 minutes after the game. Scott Norwood and you can getting get ready for a possible field goal drive. Toronto Rush, continues to lead Boston in, in American League Baseball. The Cubs over the Mets 2-0. Lost there, and the Pirates win. They're presently guaranteed no less than a tie for the Eastern Division. First down, Kelly stands in, throws it up the middle of the field. He gets his man down Smith, and then the Broncos come pounding on the ball. These Broncos are really tackling today. But the Broncos are in the prevent mode here. They're going to make sure every reception is in front of a defender. The Bills come out of this first half with points. It'll be a big step. Here is a throw, and it's dropped. Wide open for the interception was Elliott Smith. Kelly is really rough, so that time he gunned it, and the Broncos again had a man right where he had to be. It did stop the clock. He's throwing on the run. Get him in a bad place, Trump. Right in the hands. Ball is intended for Andre Reed, and he was not open. Here's an up back, and it's taken by Don Smith as the Bills take it down to the 40 yard line. They go to their bag of tricks. 52 seconds to play. Plenty of time, no reason to rush or hurry. That's not a bad idea, though, with the clock running in 45 seconds to play. Here's an outlet pass, oh. and Thurman Thomas takes his eye off the ball. Almost a good play to drop it, believe it or not, for this reason. It, it was defenders right there to nail him. He'd only gained about two yards, and the incomplete stops the clock. Second down. Kelly looks, dumps it off. This oh, is Don play. Smith. Good He's going to be able to get out of bounds if he plays it right. He did not. Stayed in bounds. Now Kelly calls a timeout. Well, you, ne you never try to look at a running back and One say left. he made the wrong choice, but Smith was trying for the touchdown there. Wyman Henderson finally makes the tackle. If he gets out of bounds, boy, they're in great shape. But this is a beautifully executed play. You see Smith standing right there on the right of the screen. Richer 51. The offensive guard is out in front of him. 
Henderson just gets a glove on him. Well, I'm not so sure if he can stay on his feet. He doesn't score. But the important thing there is get out of bounds. You don't fight for inches. You try to save seconds. Ball is fouled at the 24-yard line. You'll remember the difficulty they had kicking the field goal earlier. NFL Live is coming up with Costas, McDonough, and Simpson. So we have 31 seconds to play here in Buffalo, one of the biggest NFL crowds of the season, 80,000. Buffalo, a continuing leader of the NFL in attendance virtually every year. They're either at or near the top. Out pattern, ball is caught. Look at that strike put on by an angry Elliott Smith. Al Edwards caught the ball. 16 seconds left. Kelly downs the ball, stopping the clock with 15 seconds to play. And you see how important getting out of bounds, how much it would have helped there? Boy, if Smith had taken that ball out of bounds as opposed to going for that extra few feet, Broncos would be in a lot better shape. You wonder when you see a hurry up offense like this go right through the other team why they don't come out running it. Well that's because the defense is not playing the same mindset. Look at this. Can't get out of bounds there that cost him a timeout. Smith catches the ball in bounds that cost him a timeout. They called Elliott Smith one a day in the spring in the summer drills he was catching so many interceptions but. He missed that one and now the Bills get an incomplete pass with 11 seconds to play and they'll not chance anything else on third down they'll try the field goal thinking here if there's a bad snap they can just down the ball and get another shot at it on third down for those of you out there who don't like the prevent defense you just saw the prevent defense work yeah you'll give them three points you don't want to give them a touchdown. Be interesting to see what the wind is still very strong and the holder is a quarterback Frank Reich. It's not inconceivable he could get up and throw it. It's third down. 11 seconds left. They go to the kick. And Norwood this time drills it up and good. So the Bills avert a first half shutout. They get the field goal from Scott Norwood with six seconds to play. It's a 14 to 3 game Denver. Denver went 80 yards the first time it had the ball today. A sustained drive, 12 plays. Bobby Humphrey in on the payoff end, then they came back later. And with Steve Sewell from just over a yard out for their second touchdown. Tonight, pick off the evening on NBC with the funniest and hottest news show of the season. Hull High. And make sure you have your McMillions game card from McDonald's because. And the Buffalo theme song, Let's Go Buffalo, but Buffalo isn't going too much in this game. They moved the ball at times, but then something stopped the drive. Denver coming in on the road, playing its best game of the season without any question. The Broncos have been sound every aspect of the game. I see Marv Levy waving furiously there on the sideline. Do you try an onside kick here? I don't think you gain anything with just six seconds left, but Marv Levy was waving furiously to Scott Norwood, the kicker. Scott Norwood can probably bounce it down the field. Try to run out that clock. Bounces it down the field. Picked up by Orson Mobley. <laughs> what a load he is to knock down. And that'll do it for the first half of play. So the Broncos go to the locker room with some big winnings, a 14 to 3 lead over the favored Buffalo Bills. We're going now to NFL Live in New York as we're ready to switch there into Bob Costas. Bob? By Denver. It's going to take a major mind shift in the Buffalo Bills in order for them to get back in this football game. Well, there they could have... be some broken blackboards in there. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm sure some there are some chairs and lockers. Yes, no question about that. But they have. They've done very little. I mean, gaining yards for three points at the end of the first half is nice. But that's what the defense wants you to do. They'll give you the three points. If you look at the numbers, time of possession, total yards, yards rushing, first down, everything is the Denver Broncos. This is the way Buffalo played last Monday night 
against the New York Mets, uh, New York Jets. Now, why Buffalo has played in his first half like, uh, like, like they were out to lunch, I have no idea. Well, Bobby Humphrey had a great first half. Uh, Denver runner had 100 yards rushing, but Elway made some just sensational plays when there wasn't anything there. I remember that one, that third down and six play. Receivers were shut off. The rush was on. Off he goes in a 13-yard run to keep the scoring drive alive. Now you see the numbers. Thomas, Thurman Thomas came in as the NFL's leading rusher with 315 yards through three games. Oh, wait a minute. That's 20 carries, isn't it, for 100 yards? Yeah, That's 20 not... carries for Bobby Humphrey for 100 yards. He's getting five a pop. Terrific player, Bobby Humphrey. Two-time All-American for the Crimson Tie. There is Thurman Thomas. Do not discount this man. Well, they got to get it going. A weapon ready to explode at any time. This opening drive of the second half for the Buffalo Bills is it. They're either in this game or out of it on this drive. Red Wells sees the ball blow off the kicking tee. The wind, the flag's been straight out all day. It's a swirling wind blowing for primarily across the field. Redwell's been a terrific kicker for the Denver Broncos. As we mentioned, he went to the Pro Bowl. He's won the Broncos' last two games with field goals against Seattle and Kansas City on the last play. That might be the first thing that's happened good for the Buffalo Bills today. Redwell moves into the ball, hits it downfield. A line drive could be tough to handle. It's picked up nicely at the 10-yard line by Don Smith. Bill's got a big return out of it as Smith is across the 40 and all the way out to the 47-yard line. So Buffalo on a line drive kick gets the very good return of 37 yards from Don Smith. And the Bills do indeed Trump start out with good field position and that you've termed an all-important drive. Absolutely. Atwater makes the tackle and, and this is the way you set the tone for a half. When your special teams can get you great field position and the offense goes out there and say all right now we got to get it done this time. There's Atwater finally getting him down. So Kelly with a new formation a power set right he goes to Thurman Thomas and another big play as Mecklenburg shot the gap also on the play was the nose tackle Greg Cragen 71 made the head on hit standout defense by the Broncos again Don, the only explanation I can give for the lack of running in the first half is the uh, replacement of Will Wolford uh, he's not in there you got Parker Glenn Parker the rookie playing left tackle but that can't be all of it Kelly on second down and 10 and out pattern it's incomplete at the 41 yard line Dennis Smith an enforcer got there just as the ball did made the hit right at the opportune moment and a receiver was Thurman Thomas out of the backfield so now the Bills find themselves third and long third and 10 and Denver has won this matchup every single down there's Marv Levy and Denver's coming in with the extra defensive backs Buffalo with the extra wide receivers and this has not worked. Buffalo has gotten very little. There's Wade Phillips with Lofton. Brooks on the sideline. James Lofton to the lower portion of screens, the guy that Kelly's been going to. Kelly's not going to anybody unless he can get it away. He does get it to Smith. And he's down to the 46-yard line as the Broncos are hitting three and four times on the tackle. Wyman Henderson, the right cornerback, made the first pop. Well, that's three downs, short. three downs and out. After starting at their 47 yard line. Vance Johnson is back. There he is, number 82. The Vance. Rick Tootin called in to punt. Buffalo changed punters after the debacle against the Miami Dolphins. Tootin hits it high downfield. And Vance is. Forces into a fair catch at his 12 yard line. So Johnson with a fair catch. The Broncos have the ball, but they start deep in their own end. Open their play from scrimmage in the third quarter. It's going to be interesting if there's any defensive change here by the uh, Buffalo Bills. Not personnel, but if they go to the blitz a little more and commit a few more guys to the line of scrimmage, which if they do, I think that's exactly what uh, John Elway, Dan Reeves would like to see. Humphrey has just run up. Uh, the gut an awful lot over and through a lot of Buffalo Bills. The offensive line blocking has been masterful by the Denver Broncos. Humphrey right back at it. Marker comes in as Humphrey has dropped for no gain. Ray Bentley number 50 makes the stop. Marker down. 
Bills are signaling a hold. That's what Bob McElwee is signaling. It's usually better when he does it the official ruling. There's Walt Corey in the glasses and the hat. He's the defensive coordinator. A lot of guys keeping charts over there. Referee's mic apparently not working. Bills are declining the penalty. Two yard gain, so they'll go. Will the Broncos second down and eight? They lead 14 to three early in the third quarter. All audible here by Elway. Humphrey. And he's very close to a first down as he got out to the 21 yard line. He'll be about a yard short. Ray Bentley and Daryl Talley. Right side backers made the stop. Now the offensive line of the Denver Broncos really taking care of the center of this Buffalo Bill defense. Now watch the center carts and the two guards really doing a good job of shoving people all over the place. Nice little spot for Humphrey to run there. He needs just over two. That's a tough play call. They might throw. They go to Humphrey. He squirms and did he get there it'll be then on the spot the linesman comes in and it appears where he came in Trump he's going to have it. Looks like he's going to have it. Yeah you never know about these. Jeff Wright the nose tackle had some big problems in the first half with Denver's Denver's offensive blocking but he shed the block there and made the hit on Humphrey. Now one of the things that you know Buffalo's defense is a one gap defense that is it is a first down for Denver It's a one gap defense and a one gap defense is. A defensive player is assigned a gap and that's the one he's responsible for. Well Denver has done a great job of audibling to the back of that slant and Humphrey when he gets to the center there's nobody there. So the Broncos now set up first down and ten. Elway long ball going for it out of the and it's intercepted picked off by Kirby Jackson. He's across the 40 and out to the 49 yard line. Bruce Smith ought to get credit for that interception. He was in Elway's face and he had to lock the ball. It hung and Jackson was right on it. Intended for Sewell. Excuse me, intended for Jackson. Mark Jackson and you're right down the ball under throne. That's one of the few times that Bruce Smith has been a factor in this game so far. There you see right inside Perry. And that's Denver's second turnover. Kirby Jackson makes the interception, and now the offense has got to get going here for Buffalo. Temperature dropping a bit. It's in the 50s. Very good playing conditions, though that wind is going to affect long balls and long kicks. Bills pick up the blitz. Here's the throw. Thurman Thomas, you'll remember the one he dropped in the first half. He's right on this one, and he's out to the cross midfield of the 45 yard line. Fans. fans calling for a late hit. Yeah. Michael Brooks knocked him down. I think Buffalo can accomplish something with this kind of offense. That is, don't try to go deep. Just keep getting it to the running backs just over the line of scrimmage on the pass. That seems to be the open spot here in this Bronco defense. Kelly, second and four. Another dump off. Herman Thomas, both hands on the ball. He's ahead for a Bills first down at the 39 yard line of Denver. You see, what's happening is that the linebackers of the Broncos, watch Fletch, Simon Fletcher, well, you couldn't really see him, but they're, they're dropping back about 12 or 14 yards. And I think Thomas will be open underneath that linebacker coverage a lot. Then he's got to break that first tackle. Well, you have to think, Trump, the Bills took a lot away from that closing drive in the second quarter when everything worked throwing the ball, setting up the field goal. He is going to pressure Kelly on these short drops. Another short drop. Pump fake. Now he's looking deep. He bought some time, but he's running out of it. Downfield throw, and he throws it away. He had a man in the general vicinity of the ball on the play. Keith McKellar at tight end. I think his receivers ran the wrong patterns. Kelly pumped, and there was nobody in the area where he was pumping to. You've done that, right? Yes, I have. Marv Levy, he doesn't call the offense. Ted Marchabroda calls the offense. Hand signaled in from the sideline. Marcia Broda's come under some fire here. He's not having a creative offense. He had one of the best offensive game plans, both conceptually and in the execution, that anybody's seen in a long time. Monday night against the Jets when the Bills came out and destroyed the Jets. 
Kelly looks on second down. He's going to take it himself. Jim Kelly gets inside the 35-yard line. Dallas Cowboys hanging right in against the Giants. They just scored to the Cowboys in an Emmett Smith run, and they trail 17-10. Miami, Pittsburgh got six points. What's happening here? As we check the Hurts 10-minute ticker. Detroit and Green Bay in a battle at Pontiac, Michigan. Eagles continue to lead the Colts. Buccaneers continue to lead the Vikings at Minneapolis. And here in western New York, the Denver Broncos lead the Bills 14 to 3. Third down. Bills need just about four. Kelly's in trouble. He gets out of it. Lost the ball. Picked it up. But they're taken out of field position for a no, field goal throw. Nobody to throw to. Absolutely no one. Townsend finally gets Kelly. But you can't blame this on Jim Kelly. Look at him. Look desperately all over the place. They are doubling every receiver. He has nobody to go to. Rick Tootin on the field. The punt now for the Bills. Hits a high spiral. A well-placed punt. They'll let it roll, and it does hop in. A touchback, and the Broncos will get it at their 20-yard line with 9 minutes and 29 seconds to play in the third quarter. Broncos holding to a 14-3 lead. So Elway and company set to go to work in a moment. The Toyota versus the Isuzu standard pickup. If Earth were invaded by giant reptiles, which would be better prepared? Get out of here! America's wheels. And we're set to go as the Broncos line up first and 10 at their 20. Some breaks through and the handoff goes to Bobby Humphrey. Two tough yards for Humphrey, who's an upright runner, takes a lot of hard hits, but he comes right back. Jeff Wright, the nose tackle, stopped him. Along with Daryl Talley, 56. Not as upright this year as he was last year, in my opinion. He, he's got that forward lean a little bit, so the hits he takes are on his shoulder pads and not in his chest and in his stomach. Humphrey coming off his two best career games back to back 127 and 132 yards rushing against KC in Seattle and I is going to probably have his best game ever today over he had 100 yards in the first half. Hard throw by Elway and a nice breakup by Kirby Jackson came right into the right moment knocked the ball away from Vance Johnson. Don there is something here on the positive side for Buffalo. They're shutting down the first down yardage of the Denver Broncos and putting Denver in a tough spot. And that was a second down in about eight. And that's when you can go with the pass rush, although Denver is going with the three-step stuff. Now, again, here's this formation that the Buffalo Bills have had great difficulty with. Four wide receivers and six defensive backs on their side of the ball. Third down, John Elway and the Broncos need seven. Big rush and down the free ball. Buffalo has it at the 10-yard line, and that... Smith right here and it's just a bull rush that gets to John Elway and bounces the ball loose. Great quickness. Daryl Talley recovers the ball. Again he goes around Gerald Perry like Gerald Perry is not even there. That's why you teach quarterbacks to hold that ball in two hands Don. Elway had it in one it's knocked loose. The Bills now with their deepest penetration of this game starting this drive at just outside the Denver 10. Nice play fake by Kelly. Lots of time, but nobody open. Here's the rush. There's the throw. And he had nobody to go to again. Terrific defensive coverage by the Broncos. Good play action fake. Held everybody at the line of scrimmage defensively, but coming into this game, you know, I think the, the Broncos were worried about Elliott Smith and Wyman Henderson, but watch the coverage. They're just, watch Andre Reed at the top of the screen. The defensive back falls, but Kelly never sees him. He finally just throws it away. 
Now a bright sunshine hitting the field as the Bills look on second down and goal from the 10 yard line. Kelly faking. He's looking. He's in trouble and he's knocked down for a loss at the 12 yard line. A tremendous moral victory for the Broncos if they can limit Buffalo to a field goal or less on this drive. Reagan and Fletcher were on the staff. Again, great pressure, but this is a coverage sack. And you see the cornerback, Wyman Henderson, 24, had bump and run on James Lofton. Man, I'm telling you, this, this is as good a defensive effort as I've seen Denver make. Very big down now. The Bills have it. Third down and goal from the 12-yard line. A draw would work here. A draw would work here. There it is. Down they go to the goal line. It's a touchdown. Trump, you had it all the way. A draw would work, and a draw it was with Don Smith on the payoff end. That's the first time they've taken advantage of that defense with the extra defensive backs in the ball game. It was obviously an audible. Watch what happens. You see the two safeties switch. They run the trap up the middle, and you've got a 280-pound offensive tackle blocking that water. The draw trap works for the score. So Don Smith comes in and does the job and now a bad snap. This is big. And it's a 14 to 9 game. Goodness. This could loom large as the game wears on. Adam Linger was the snapper. It got through the hands of Frank Wright. But the Bills have a touchdown. They'll kick off in a moment. When David and Lisa Edmondson needed life insurance, they came to see me. I'm Kent Spearman, their State Farm agent. I help the Edmondson... Storm clouds looming in the distance. We could have more rain. There's been none during the game. There was heavy rain last night this morning. 7.53 to go, third quarter. Kickoff hit downfield. Coming up on it is Sammy Winder. Sammy finds a lane and is quickly shut down at the 30-yard line. Don, here's the weakness of this defense, this area right here. So how do they get to it? They move this guy back here. He goes up here and watch the block by Howard Ballard on Atwater. The two safeties get confused as to where the strength of the formation is. They catch him in mid-shift. Bam, he pops up through there and in for the score. They finally took advantage of the weakness of that defense. Ballard, a 315-pound offensive tackle, took Atwater out of the play. Now let's see what that way in the Broncos do. They go to the runner. Here's Bobby Humphrey. Turns up field, and Humphrey, as the Bills go hard for the ball, is out to the 39-yard line. The flag comes in, too. Yep, another marker in on the play. Cornelius Bennett, 97, Humphrey was on the tackle. Holding. Defensive holding, Whoa. automatic first down. Coach Levy wants an explanation here. Holding, 47 defense, and forced from the end of the run. Five yards, first down. That's an interesting call. See if we can pick out what happened. Oh, there's. There's 47 Kirby Jackson. I guess he just that's a hold defensive holding roof. Had his arm around Clarence K's waist but. Man. Marv Levy sees it go as a first down an automatic on the defensive holding call and the Broncos now have the ball out to their 43. Humphrey open gap. Bobby Humphrey breaks it all the way down to the Bills 40 yard line. The Bills have some defensive axioms. Number one, keep the opposition below 20 points. Number two, keep the opposition below 300 yards total offense. 
keep them to 100 yards or less rushing is number three and Humphrey had that in the first half. Here's the counter. Look at the tackle and the guard pull this way. They block down and and after that little jab step Humphrey's right up through there with very little problem whatsoever. Another big game. Boy is he having a game. Sensational. And right back to Humphrey. This time they're looking for him and they get him at the 41 yard line. Loss of a yard. Right now the Broncos are working with a wind somewhat at their back. It's a swirling wind almost cutting across the field. This time Daryl Talley makes the tackle. But Bruce Smith is there. It's a double team by the tight end and and Perry and nobody touches Daryl Talley and he's there to make the tackle. Second down arises now. Second down and 10 for Elway and the Broncos. They lead the game 14 to 9. Led at halftime 14 3. Drop ball, a little low. Vance Johnson couldn't get his hands on it. Now that, that's the one pass that John Elway throughout his career has had problems with. Uh, that, that's a feature of the run and shoot, you know, where you, you kind of dash a little bit to the left or right and then try to get it out to the underneath receiver just running the drag pattern. And when he throws it badly, he throws it into the ground. As coaches Trump say Elway's a man on a mission, had the best training camp of his career. Broncos, rather than being down after that Super Bowl blowout at the hands of San Francisco, are getting ready to go back if they can. Yeah, but you know, the difference in this football team is it's no longer up to John Elway. Now they got Bobby Humphrey. Yeah. It used to be just totally up to John Elway. Third down. They give it to Sammy Winder. He turns the corner, and Sammy's going to lose yards. Back to the 43-yard line. So the Broncos have to punt the ball. Don, you just saw a picture of Mark Kelso making the tackle. We heard at halftime he broke his hand. He's out there in the second half playing with a broken right hand. You see that he's got one good one though. Yeah. Well, yes. Moran hits the ball beautifully down the field, and the Broncos have coverage there, but it carries into the end zone. That swirling wind got it and took it in. So the Bills will take over the ball and have it first and ten at their 20, with 5:24 to play in the third quarter. Ah, we're here. Stadium. The Bills now with the ball first and ten. Free ball. It's up for grabs. And the Broncos signal they have it. They do. The Broncos get the fumble recovery. Looks like Pragan was on it. Thurman Thomas fumbled the ball. You know, Don, it looked like he never got it from Kelly. He never cleanly got that handoff. This is simple. He never did get it. No, it looked like he went too far outside. The turnover count is now even, Trump, three each way. Now watch where you see the jab step. What? Oh, Kelly puts it in there. That's just on Thurman Thomas. He was looking at the defense. Absolutely, he was looking at the defense. Each team now with three turnovers. A long way to go, and they probably won't be the last. The six that are up on the board so far. 5:04 to play in the third quarter. How about these numbers? Denver to this point has rushed for 161 yards. Thurman Thomas and the uh, Buffalo Bills, 34. Now we'll see if the Broncos can capitalize on this big turnover. You remember the Elway fumble at the 10, and Buffalo subsequently scored its only touchdown. Big rush, open then. Running in the open field is Sammy Winder. Head down, Winder takes it to the six-yard line, and, and it might flag. have a late hit call. They also kick the flag, which might be an additional penalty. Shane Conlon and Clarence K, 88K, 58 Conlon. There's bad blood there. Last year when they played on a Monday night, K with a low block hit Conlon in the knee from the blind side, and Conlon was up. said he was going to get K today in case they will I'll be wearing number 88 he knows where to find me yeah, Sammy Winder lowers his shoulder here Leonard Smith hits him Shane Conlon it was a hit on uh, the carrier the winder K came in from off the play to mix it up with Conlon Conlon missed a month with the knee injury suffered that game a year ago and now he puts the Broncos in the driver's seat even more inside the five first down and goal 
Winder and Humphrey, the runners. That's Sammy Winder, and he's in for a Bronco touchdown. That's the same play that Steve Sewell scored on. Oh, I'm telling you, this offensive line of the Denver Broncos. Terrific. They go back to Denver first class. Put them up front. You're going to see this. George Henshaw is the man who coaches that offensive line. Once again, you see the block here, trap pull, and you see Winder come right up in behind it. I mean, this is relatively simple, and it's the same one that Sewell scored on in the first half. Extra point hit up and good by Treadwell, and the Broncos now lead the game 21 to 9. 23 21, and Denver finally won a 24 23. 14 points on turnovers, not bad. Spinning kick, it's short. Here comes Smith. You'll remember he ran the last one out to the 47. And he breaks this one out to the 40 yard line. So the kick return team giving the Bills good field position. Now we go to NFL Live in New York. Bob? Thank you, Bob. 21 9 is the count here in western New York. Orchard Park, New York, nearby to Buffalo. As the Bills have the ball, they're trailing on their home field. Here's a draw play as they go to Thurman Thomas, and they've shut him down. He ran a wild Monday night against the Jets. Every yard has been an effort for him today against this Denver defense. Greg Craig of the nose tackle and inside linebacker Michael Brooks were on the stop. Don, you know, I've mentioned this. This is a one-gap defense. Watch what the nose tackle does. He takes this side of the center, and then he, and then he can run around the block by Ken Hull here and he's there to make the tackle that's a one gap defense taking the shoulder of that center live action on second and nine Bills go to the run and get some yards as they're out to about the 44 yard line that'll bring up third down Jim Shemansky the 10th round draft choice the rookie starting at right end they've had some injury problems there oh. Alfonso Carrick are out for the season and Ron Holmes is out for this game with a muscle pull well, that's after Thomas had 200 plus yards rushing last week. He has been no factor today. Humphrey, his third straight 100 yard rushing performance. Last week, the Broncos lost a top cornerback, Tyrone Braxton, for the season. Knee surgery. Doctors are optimistic that he'll be back playing again next season, though. Downfield throw. It's hot. Andre Reed is to the 39 yard line. 16 yards on the play and a first down for the Bills. Randy Robbins makes the tackle. It looks like Buffalo is now getting some idea what to do with this nickel package that Denver has. As we check the 10 minute ticker, Detroit extending its lead over the Packers. Philadelphia with just a three point lead over winless Indianapolis. Kelly on first down stands in. Here's a throw, a catch. That's Jamie Mueller. First time he's had his hands on the ball since that fumble in the first half. Fans looking for a late hit call. Brooks, a 235 backer, pound backer from LSU, made the stop. Boston now to within a run of Toronto. Five to four in the fifth inning. Two minutes and 15 seconds left to play here in the third quarter. Joe Montana said after the Super Bowl that Denver defense was predictable. It was easy to move the ball against. They've changed a lot of things. The Bills have struggled against it all day. Swing pass. Mueller looking for room to run on a second down play. He lost two yards. Great defense. Broncos Simon, down. Simon Fletcher was out there to make sure that the screen went nowhere. Simon was shaken up. I think he's up though. Warren Powers makes the tackle, but that play was made by, excuse me, Shemansky made the tackle, but just at the end of this play, you'll see, watch Simon Fletcher right there, 73. Mueller's got to avoid him. Two blockers on Simon Fletcher and Shemansky there to make the tackle for no gain. Simon Fletcher is a big linebacker. 6'5, 245 pounds, great speed. Not good in coverage, but another one of those pass rush specialists that Denver has, like Carl Mecklenburg on the other side. Big guy seems to be okay as he goes off for a play or so. 140 to play in the third quarter. 
Denver in the lead 21 to 9. He gets blasted here Fletcher as he tries to come back. Watch the block on him. Yeah, it gets crowded out there. Double of them. But he did make the play. Not the tackle but he made the play. Turned it in. That's, That's right. right. Kept the contain and now Kelly's forced to a tough down third and 11. Broncos come with a four man rush but it gets through and Kelly's lost back at the 45 yard line. Mecklenburg does the job. Touchdown machine Carl Mecklenburg he scored one last week. On a two yard run on a fumble recovery of Craig. Well he takes advantage of the rookie Glenn Parker. Gets right up inside of him. Mecklenburg is always watch right to the left of your picture the outside move the swim with the arm over the top and Mecklenburg is there before Kelly can set up to even look downfield Mecklenburg has designs one Dan going to possibly go to medical school his father's a physician here's the punt downfield it's caught in the wind would be tough to handle and it'll go out of bounds at the 27 I asked Mecklenburg what he does in the offseason he said gets ready to play football again he said I'm in the football business year round lifting weights and running. 25 yard punt is all 12th round draft choice out of Minnesota Carl Mecklenburg but he said he was drafted as a nose tackle moving up the evolutionary ladder he is now he's at <laughs> outside linebacker game two coming up today a doubleheader day on NBC Sports big game the Browns going against the Chiefs at Kansas City Houston against San Diego coaches who face the Chargers rave about that team they all predict the Chargers are going to win a lot of games this year Jets at New England. Get the, your local listings for the game in your area. The doubleheader game as Humphrey tries to go wide and does. Boy. Dipping in and out. There's a lot of tackling late. This could be another late hit. Bennett hit him out of bounds. Humphrey made something out of absolutely nothing there. Marv Levy, the Bills coach, has a basic rule. He said, don't be dumb. Don't be dirty. First down. There's no 87 defense. There's a 97. That's who it was, Cornelius Bennett. That white line you're supposed to let up. The Marv Levy axiom, don't be dumb, don't be dirty. The Bills have an hour starting up with a full-scale affair. Yeah, and the two guys involved, Bobby Humphrey and Cornelius Bennett, Gave each other a hug. Hey, that's you know that's the way the game is played. Everybody well, they, else is fighting. They played together for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, those two guys are friends. And it's not going to try to hurt his former Alabama partner. We don't think he is. Although I got to tell you, you know, roommates have been known to take on each other once you cross these white that's lines. Right. Brothers. If you're wearing the wrong color. You're a target. Broncos have a brother act, Doug Waddell and Dave Waddell. The offensive lineman from Boston College. 23 seconds to go in the third quarter. And up. Humphrey weaving his way through the Buffalo defense. It's just remarkable. It looks like three or four people have an angle on him, and yet he keeps going and gets ahead on a first down carry for a gain of eight yards. Leonard Smith, a strong safety finally brought him down. Yeah, but look what they do up front. They just shove these guys back off the ball and Bobby Humphrey basically has his choice as to where he wants to run. See, they just stand people up and let the defense go where it wants to go. Humphrey makes the choice and he's, that'll do it. Trump for three quarters of play. Denver the leader 21 to 9 and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. With how oh, high it's hot. It's TV. Back to live action. We open the fourth quarter. The Broncos in the lead and with the ball. Here's a handoff as Humphrey again shoots into the Bills defense and comes inside the 40 yard line down close to the 38. Humphrey 6'1, 201 pounds, a native Alabama. Two broken foots. Or feet. Feet, yes. <laughs> broken. Same bone, actually, in the same left foot. Not the left feet, right? Right. Two breaks in the same foot. Look at it. Here we are as he runs again all day long. And a marker's down at the line of scrimmage on a first down carry. Don, last year, Denver came into Buffalo, played them on Monday night, a premier football game that's holding against the Denver Broncos. This play will come back. And the Broncos rush for over 200 yards. They're closing it in at 200 yard mark again today. 
Dan Reeves was saying yesterday, holding number 88, offense, 10 yards, first down. Holding call on Clarence K, the tight end. Reeves was saying yesterday, if you're in a must-pass situation against the Buffalo defense, he said you're in big trouble. Yeah. Well, what Bobby Humphrey with his with his rushing yardage today has done has given Denver a lot of second and twos, second and threes. Those are great downs for any offense. Humphrey breaks it inside the 40-yard line and down to the 37. First down and 20 play. Humphrey, like all the great ones, the more he gets it, the more he likes it. Getting stronger as the game goes on, he busts loose for a 12-yard gain. And even with 13.50 left, you get the feeling, Trump, this thing is ebbing away from the Bills. They just can't get anything going when they do get the ball. Look at that double-team block. Jeriga and Cart 66 and 72 on the nose tackle. Jeff Wright was six yards down the field. He's basically the only guy they've given it to him, given it to, and they still can't stop him. A year ago, the Broncos came in here on a Monday night and dominated the Bills. They come in today and dominate again. Here's the ball slapped back at John Elway by Cornelius Bennett. That's about all the Buffalo Bills have left to do. Blitz their brains out for the rest of this game. Try to get the, the turnover. You see Smith coming 78, Tally coming 56. Bennett coming 97. Try to get the turnover. The only chance to get back in his ball game. Good second look. Our producer today for NBC Sports is Terry Eward. Our director Andy Rosenberg. The executive producer of NBC Sports Terry O'Neill. We have 13-24 to play. The Broncos with a third down and nine play coming up. Elway gets some time. Loops to an open man. Running free is Vance Johnson. He has the first down. All the way down to the 11 to the 16 yard line. So the Vance running free and a lead pass to Elway under pressure for a 20 yard gain. Once again here's this defense that has not worked and here's the primary receiver. This is the man who is single in coverage and Johnson goes over here and gets picked off. Elway has the time enough to look and wait for Johnson to clear through all of the uh, mess out there. You see Kirby Jackson 47 not even close a 20 yard gain and boy has this game plan worked. They have beat that defense the nickel back into Buffalo to death. Humphrey darting in darting out turning the corner and getting down to the 14 yard line on a first down carry. And we're going to go back to NFL Live in New York now and Bob Costas. Bob? Don Albert. Badly. Yes, so does Ron Meyer. So does Ron Meyer. Let's see what the Broncos go to now. And this diverse game plan of theirs attacking from every dimension. Second down and eight. Draw. Humphrey down to the eight yard line. Gain of six or seven yards on the play. And the Bills defense doesn't seem to have its usual pop now as Denver's taken it away and they've also taken the crowd out of the game. The Giants blowing away Dallas for a second time this season. Miami doing the same to Pittsburgh. The Dolphins will have a one game lead in the AFC East over Buffalo at day's end. Dolphins are going to three and one with that apparent victory at Pittsburgh today. Bills unable to stop. Draw plays. Sprint. Draw. Wag draw. Humphrey up the middle. I always sets in the shotgun and calls a quarterback draw. And he's down to the seven yard line. Looks like he's just short of a first down. It'll bring a fourth down. They'll kick a field goal. Certainly a design play. Flooded the left side of the formation with wide receivers and runs the quarterback rollout to the right. Didn't work. Darrell Talley with the tackle. One of the few plays today that's not worked. game going by very quickly a year ago it'd be a quarter to four when you had 10 minutes left in the game it's 20 after three here Eastern time Treadwell it has a block Cornelius Bennett he can run Cornelius Bennett in a live ball is going to go the distance for the Bills. So the defense will score a touchdown as Cornelius Bennett takes it all the way. He 
80 yards, no flag. It looked like Nate Odoms was the guy who blocked it. to try the point after he'd bring Buffalo to within four if he hits it or within five and he does now it looks like there's a lot of there's a penalty marker down also roughing the kicker it might have been so they'll kick off after penalty yardage extra point is good personal foul roughing the kicker 28 defense that penalty will be assessed on the kickoff Cornelius 80 yards for a touchdown, and this crowd has erupted now in the big defensive play. Once again, you'll see the block. It's Odoms from the outside. Again, it's on Rick Dennison, 55. He was cut three weeks ago, brought back this week. Ends up being Cornelius Bennett's first touchdown in the NFL. Now to live action, the kickoff downfield taken at the five-yard line. Winder breaks it. And Sammy Winders out across the 25 to the 27 yard line. And again, very nearly a late hit. I was talking yesterday, Trump had practice with Bruce DeHaven, the Bills special teams coach, and they stress blocking kicks by extending at the ball, not raising your arms. That gives people a window to get it in the air. Well, you, you got a young man, Rick Dennison, who for years was a major contributor to this Bronco defense way three weeks ago, brought back in the middle of this week. And that's the second block that has happened at that spot. Remember, Daryl Talley got inside and blocked the field goal before. Odoms did this time, gets it outside. The Broncos had this crowd out of the game, but now they're right back in it. Humphrey, hit, knocked down. Jeff Wright, the nose tackle, who's been knocked around a little bit today, makes a head-on stick. A gain of no gain. Second down and ten. That may be one of the few tackles he's made all day. This time he jumps behind Keith Carts. It was a full hit. Yes, it was. Humphrey protecting the ball. Both these defenses are hunting the football. This place is now a cauldron of sound. 80,000 making it tough on Elway in the Bronco offense. Denver leads 21 to 16. Timing throw. Elway tipped off. Intercepted. The ball picked off by Leonard Smith. He's going to go in, and Buffalo takes the lead. point attempt by Norwood is no good he missed the extra point and Buffalo now holds to a one point lead 22 to 21 even if they made it a field goal could conceivably win it for the Broncos but we've got a long way to go the defense is now scoring so I'm standing in the checkout line and this really attractive woman sees I have Kellogg's brand big things are happening fast here in the Buffalo as the Bills have scored twice on defensive touchdowns and taken the lead. Now they kick off again. Vance Johnson dancing. He's in trouble. Here's a penalty marker down. Bills have, have really ignited this whole place. The team and the 80,000. Legal use of hands on the kick return by Denver. So Coach Reeves' team will be way back in their own end to start a drive. They're down by a single point with a lot of time left.
Here's the tip pass by Leon Seals. 96 is the man who gets his hand up. Leonard Smith there to make the interception. And now the turnovers today, 12 points produced for Buffalo defensively, two missed extra points. Big block and return by Shane Conlon. And Leonard Smith goes in. And right after Cornelius Bennett went in on an 80-yard return of a blocked field goal. Elway unable to call signals looking to the referee for relief. Yeah, now, wait a minute. Now, Buffalo here is encouraging the fans to do that, and that's not smart because they'll stop the 45-second clock, and, and Denver can stand there forever. The defense can't encourage the crowd. Now, Shane Conlon is telling them to quiet down. That's going to help a bunch, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. They get the message. Yes. Has been requested to assist in quieting the crowd. We appreciate your cooperation. Whether or not he'll get their cooperation remains to be seen. talking about the difficulty of all the audibles they like to call in a stadium as loud as this and there's none louder than mile high if the Bills yeah. are out there they the crowd in mile high will take an offense out of the game on the other side but they worked out in the bubble this week in Denver just in case this happens so they'll go on a silent count should not be a factor probably to Humphrey he's the long setback in the ace backfield the ace alignment Buffalo. Buffalo. Elway got it no, Buffalo no. has it the noise and it might have been a pound off on the snap. I think he might have gotten a snap before Ella was ready for it. Well, it looked to me like the center, Keith Parks. He had a big block to make on Jeff Wright, and it looked like he moved and moved too quickly. Virtually no game clock time has elapsed, and Buffalo's in position to score its third touchdown. Yeah, best thing that's happened to Buffalo is the offense hasn't taken the field. <laughs> right. And off. Touchdown, Kenneth Davis. Absolutely unbelievable what's going on here. That's two touchdowns in about 12 seconds. Okay. Norwood ready to kick yet another extra point try. He's missed two today. He gets this one. Amazing. And he extends Buffalo's lead to eight points. A very, very important extra point. Denver has to score a touchdown and a field goal to win now. That's 19 points now produced by Buffalo because of the turnovers. 19 of the 29 scores. Again, we've got to go back to the fumble. Watch the center, Keith Carts. He's got a key block, and it looks to me like he pulls out too quickly. Never gets the snap cleanly up to John Elway and Cornelius Bennett there to make the recovery. Boy, is that two big plays in a row? Picks up the block field goal, runs it in. I don't know if I've ever seen a game turn this quickly, this much. I don't, I don't think I have. Absolutely astounding. Buffalo scored three touchdowns in a minute and 17 seconds. 77 seconds. Three touchdowns. Two by the defense. Spinning kick short coming up on his advanced jump. He's got a head of steam. And he's across the 35 out to the 36. And there's still nine minutes and two seconds left to play in the game. 
So Elway has a lot of time to work. Broncos down by eight. Five Denver turnovers today, though. A minute and a half ago, Denver led this game 21 to nine. A minute and a half on the game clock. Now they're trailing 29-21. It's been unbelievable. Crowd noise is unbelievable also. Elway gets the playoff. He's got time. Throws to Bobby Humphrey and Shane Conlon drills him. Uh, if if the Buffalo Bills can't stop him here with all this adrenaline pumping, they can't stop him. I don't think this defense can be any higher emotionally than it is right now. Defense is going to say to the Buffalo offense when they go out, see if you can hold them. Yes. Just get us the ball. We'll score. <laughs> That's right. Runs out of time and throws the ball away. Seals tipped that ball again, Don. Yeah, he did. Leon Seals, who's had a tremendous season from the first day of August practice. The left end from Jackson State. Dr. Sack. He's got that in his license plate. I think I'd pick him in a jump ball, too. He, he's been up there today. Watch again. Seals right out there. No, the ball was not tipped. Take it back. Elway, 10 of 20, 149 yards. He's been intercepted twice. Bills jamming the front. Smith left early. Could be a free play if John Elway can get away, and he can't. That will come back, though. Bruce Smith is saying he was drawn offside. Of course he would. He, apparently he was. Number who? I couldn't hear it. Let's see if we can pick up the infraction. All star. The offense. Oh yeah. No you see Gerald no Perry. Third down. Gerald Perry, number 60, kind of rocking back there to make sure that uh, he can get a shot on Bruce Smith, and because it's a dead ball foul, the rocking back, the sack doesn't count. Well, this is the stuff that's made. John Elway famous. Somehow he gets his team back into the game. They'll be back in it. He's now doing the snap count with his foot. Smith. Complete destruction from the right side. Bruce Smith. Now you see why Gerald Perry was trying to get out of his stance a little earlier on the last play. See why Bruce Smith was the number one player picked in the NFL draft when he came out. Horan hits a good punt against a lot of pressure. Wynn holds it up. Chris Hale fields it. And he's down at the 44 yard Hale line. Little defensive back from Sammy USC. Well, and Bruce, better off call him boss. The Mitsubishi Galant has won major awards in both Japan. Bruce Smith outside Gerald Perry. Second sack of the day. A nice little sack dance. He could use some work. That might need some work. Got a dance, but... From the three point, this guy is a Deacon Jones. Thurman Thomas, both arms on the ball as the Broncos try to strip it. Bill's looking to take time off the clock. It wasn't that long ago. It didn't appear they'd have enough time to come from behind. They were down 21 to 9. A minute and 17 seconds of a last elapsed time on the game clock, and the Bills had taken the lead, scoring three touchdowns in 77 seconds, two by the defense. One by Cornelius Bennett and one by Smith. Leonard Smith and John Elway and Coach Reeves now going to their disaster plan. Row deep. 
still only down by eight with seven to go. Seven minutes. Here's McKellar of the Mets Lions, the tight end, getting his first reception of the day. He has a first down. So the Bills will be huddling at their leisure now as Coach as Kelly looks over to his coaches. A 10-yard gain on that play. We look at the 10-minute ticker. The Giants continue to lead the Cowboys now. It's a final score. The Giants have defeated the Cowboys 31-17. The Giants 4-0 on the season. Miami sends the Steelers down to another loss. Two field goals, the only scoring by Pittsburgh again. Vikings with the lead now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First down Buffalo, they're going to run it. Thurman Thomas to the 39-yard line. Michael Brooks was on the stop for the Broncos. Broncos next game. Here's the seventh inning score now. Toronto in position to move to within one game of the Red Sox in the AL East, leading at Fenway 7-4 over Boston. 5.50 to play in the game here. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. As Jim Kelly talking things over in the huddle, they'll run the clock down as far as they can. Second and eight. Herman Thomas. Rocco shut him down. <laughs> Oh, you, you sure, down properly. Yeah, you sure can't fault the performance of the Denver Bronco defense today. Holding offense. The Denver Bronco defense has shut down the league's leading rusher in Thurman Thomas. They have given Jim Kelly very few receivers to throw to. And again, look at here, Mecklenburg on the outside turns it in. Munford is there to help. Very little gain and the hold. There's Wade Phillips, defensive coordinator. Just a lightning minute and 17 seconds have made the Denver Broncos tack away. They got no win in that minute 17 seconds. Coach Levy has seen a dramatic turnabout. He's been around this game a long time. He was one of the coaches on George Allen's team that went against the Dolphins in the Super Bowl back in 72. Pitch back. Thurman Thomas running hard on second down and 17. He's inside the Broncos 45 yard line. Denver returns to Mile High Stadium to play the Cleveland Browns their next time out. Bills will be home next Sunday to go against the LA Raiders. Well, Don, I think uh, Ted Marchabrota is the offensive coordinator here, and they're going with the extra wide receivers on Buffalo's side. Denver coming, coming with the extra defensive backs. I think I try that trap up the middle again. There's Ted Marchabrota. In the faded blue jacket. I'd look for Thurman Thomas here right up the middle. I don't think I'd throw it here if I'm Kelly. Well, we'll find out as he sets in the shotgun. Third down, they need 11. Here comes the rush. Kelly dumps it over the middle. He's got loft in, and he's short of the first down. Denver had him hemmed in. At the 30 now, a marker comes in from off the play again. The back judge fired in a yellow flag. Well, if it's a face mask, that'll be a first down. That's. Oh, wait a minute. If it's a face mask, they go back from the spot of the play, Don. And they'll rule on that how it can be 5, 10, or 15, depending yes. on the intent. Unless they're saying it's after the play. Coach Reeves not pleased, looking for an explanation. Face mask, five yards. Now, wait a minute. That should be where the ball is snapped from. Not from there, I don't believe. That can't be from the spot of the foul. Let's see. They can't get the yardage and the penalty. There's a face mask, all right. It's on Alton Montgomery. This is a tough choice here. I don't think it'll be enough to give him a first down. Well, that, it might. Well, that... not, not an automatic first down. That's right. It is not an automatic first down. And we are told it. We are told it's from the end of the play. E even with the penalty, they're going to be, oh, well, they're going to give him the first down. Well, 
That's just one of the things Coach Reeves has seen today that he doesn't like. This game turned in a flick of a finger. Bang, a blocked field goal attempt. Going to spend it 80 yards off to the races for a touchdown. The Bills were back in it right after that. Tip ball by Seals, intercepted by Leonard Smith. 38 yards, touchdown Buffalo, and they took the lead. Then a fumbled snap by Elway. Play later, Kenneth Davis in, and the Bills extended their lead with a now to lead by a 29 to 21 count. Red Cragen makes the stop on Thurman Thomas. You know, I think there are a lot of uh, Dan Reeves is now exhorting his team all the time out on the defense. A lot of people question the character of the Buffalo Bills. Some people have called them the bickering Bills. But a win like this, come from behind win like this, this is a character win for Buffalo. Dan Reeves, 46 years old in his 10th year as coach of the Broncos. He knows about as much about Super Bowls as anybody does. He's been in eight, either as a player, an assistant coach, or a head coach with Dallas and Denver. This telecast is presented by as the most dramatic minute and 17 seconds. They've been playing since 1960, as have the Broncos. Sabres don't even score, score that quickly. Down they go to the 25-yard line. Mark Munford. Oh, it's happened before. That was when the Broncos had the striped socks that were vertical. They had that burning in midfield. Played in War Memorial Stadium. Uh, you know, I have a feeling at the end of the third quarter, there are a lot of fans here at Rich Stadium that were ready to get up and leave. They're back in their seats, Don. And I don't think any equal records. In the playoffs, home field will be decided by the first tiebreaker head-to-head. -head. Nothing there as the Broncos shut down the run, but the Bills content to run the clock, and now we have a timeout called by the defense. Well, you have to think that... Denver has to go for the punt block. And then you see if uh, John Elway's got magic for the third week in a row. They got they got Norwood out there, Trump. He's got some wind behind him. He might try a long one. Or the pooch punt. I think you have better protection actually for a, for a punt from field goal formation than you do from punt formation. And you don't want to give the Denver Broncos any chance here whatsoever. 3.42 left to play in the game. Buffalo 29, Denver 21. And he can punt. He's got a swirling wind behind him. It's very tough to play. He will get some help if he goes for it. And he does. Wide. No good. And the 47 yard you know, Don, the downside of that is that, that Denver now gets the ball at the 35-yard line. With 3.37 left to play. Fireworks aren't over in this one. Thing stays out. Uh, again, I, I think Norwood, they practice a lot here in Rich Stadium. Wow, that's close. And he's trying to play the wind. And hit. that's the second time today he's hit the uprights and missed two field goals. If he'd have hit it, it would have given Buffalo an 11-point lead, and Denver would need two touchdowns to win. It is now they could conceivably win with a touchdown and a field goal. But that'll take some doing against an inspired Bills defense that has turned this game around. Tip ball again. Leonard, it was Seals who got it. Leon Seals. That's absolutely amazing. I mean, Leon is tall and got a big wingspan, but you also got to be pretty darn lucky to get your hand in the right spot. Oh, it, man, it's unbelievable. Second down, shuffle pass, free ball. No, incomplete pass. Right, it'll be incomplete. It's drilled forward pass. Incomplete. 
They almost picked it up in the air. That yeah. thing was hanging. Uh, then it's a completed pass or an interception. Ball was intended for Winder. And you see Bruce Smith get right in there. Almost strips it away. But the same rules apply for the receiver. Both feet must be down and clear and complete control of the football. Right. Winder wasn't even looking when Elway threw it. 329 to play and the third and ten. Elway sets in the shotgun. Hard throw, but he brought it in on the one hop. Well, he has to go for it now. Absolutely. He completed a fourth down pass in the win against Kansas City, fourth and ten. Going right back to the huddle. You see the intended receiver, the primary receiver is Vance Johnson. James Williams right there in coverage. Against all odds, John Elway stands in. 80,000 making noise. Third down, fourth down and 10. Downfield, he's got a man, and Elway hits Ricky Nateel at midfield. First down, Broncos. A 20-yard gain, a sensational play by the Broncos. Kelso and Leonard Smith were there to make the tackle. Oh, I noticed they're they're helping Gerald Perry now. No, actually, they have Hamilton in an offensive left tackle. Perry is out. Our throw. Is it a catch? Look at that. That was good for a first down. Nateel again. He's had some problems with a knee, Ricky Nateel, a tremendous receiver from Florida. 11 yard gain and a first down. So the Broncos marching through the Bills. Denver trails 29 21. Another fastball by Elway. Down to the 25 yard line. This one's to Mark Jackson, number 80. 14 yard gain. Got to get as many plays off before the two minute warning as they possibly can here. Uh, that's a flag on the offensive left tackle. That, that stops the clock momentarily. Hamilton rocked out of his stance. 69 white. Ball start. 69. But actually, that doesn't hurt Denver. It'll stop the clock, but it'll start as soon as they put the ball down, so they have to be right at the line of scrimmage and ready to go. Two minutes and 14 seconds. They can get one more play here before the clock stops, and it's started. It, you know, it hasn't started yet. Within the last five minutes of the second half, it won't start till the snap. Now he goes to a draw. Winder running and very well. Sammy Winder's finally taken down at the 24-yard line. That'll take it down to the two-minute warning. Denver out of timeouts. Buffalo has three, and the last thing the Bills want to do at this point is stop the clock. Two minutes to play. Followed by Perry Mason, the case. Well, good Green play. Pass. On the run is Winder. He's inside the 10 and taken out of bounds at the five yard, the eight yard line. And they no, use only bad. nine Absolutely. seconds. Leon Seals brought him down. Ran that plate down from behind. You see the blitz 56 tally. They take advantage of it. Sammy Winder gets a little hit on him. 47 also was in there on the blitz. Kirby Jackson. Keaton Hart's out in front blocking. Yeah, Leon Seals all over the field today. So the Broncos out of timeouts. Stop the clock. And now they have it first down and goal at the Bills' seven-yard line. Look at this. Eleven guys at the line of scrimmage for the Bills' defense. Draw. Nothing. Bad call. Darrell Kelly, number 56, read it all the way and stopped Sammy Winder for a three-yard loss. This is going to take a lot of time off the clock. I think that's what Buffalo wanted to do is put as many guys at the line of scrimmage Make Denver think they can run it. Good defensive call by Walt Corey. There's a throw. Oh. Touchdown Broncos. Elway guns the ball into the end zone to Ricky Nateel. And Denver is now down 29 to 27 with the extra point attempt coming up at a minute 25 to play. That was James Williams, the rookie first round draft choice in coverage. And frankly, his coverage was pretty darn good. 
somehow he's going in the teal all the way. Watch this catch. Not bad, huh? The teal's made some big plays for the Broncos. Redwell knocks the extra point through and may very well be going for the onside kick. 125 to play and the Broncos are back to within one. Is anything they're going to do here? Here it comes. They've worked hard on this. Uh oh, ball. Buffalo has it. Metzler. Who once scored 45 points in a college basketball game goes high up into the air and comes down with the rebound. Well, from the kicking team's viewpoint, that's exactly what you want the ball to do. You kick it down into the ground so it can't be free caught. And if you're you're hoping the ball is a good high bounce and rattles around some hands. Redwell does it very well. But you're right. The jump ball goes to certainly the tallest player as a tight end in the NFL. There it is. Big play by Matt. Well, it was up for grabs, and Metzlarz comes down with it. Our thanks for the help in the booth to Larry Pollock, Harry Holler, Michael Gluck, and Steve Solomon. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill. Our producer today, Terry Ewert, director Andy Rosenberg, associate director John Gilmartin, as the Broncos are now powerless to stop the clock. A most unusual game turned by the Buffalo defense. So Coach Reeves and the Broncos getting set for the long trip back to Denver. They'll be at home against the Cleveland Browns in their next game. And the Bills will be back here at Rich Stadium next Sunday. They'll hook up with the L.A. Raiders. Now this one goes down in my scrapbook. This is the biggest turnaround I've ever seen in as short a time as it happened. That's it. The Bills come back to win it. Down at halftime, 14 to 3, down 21 to 9 in the fourth quarter, and they win the game 29 to 28. Coach Levy, in his long years in football, I'm sure this has got to be a hallmark game for him also, certainly as a head coach. So at the final score, Buffalo 29 and Denver 28. Stay with us for NFL Live in game two of our NFL doubleheader. For Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey. Glad you could be with us in Buffalo. There's more football coming up on NBC Sports.